Icehouse is a keyword of this OpenStack release. Why is the name? It's not because people work in an ice house with a computer and an ice desktop or anything. It's simply because last time developers met all together, it was in Hong Kong, and I suppose they don't understood anything, and they just found a street name saying, Ice House, I understand these words. It's not like Chinese, I see it. So they chose this name as the next OpenStack release. Uh, they are funny people. When they met every six months, they just kind of imagine new, new words for the new releases, and they came up with these crazy ideas. So what's included in the Ice House release? Again, I suppose you guys know what is OpenStack. If not, five, five seconds review. It's a software to run clouds, as in Amazon, for those who haven't heard about it, or um, Rackspace, which is a, a less known provider, but they also offer clouds, or as in iWeb, who offers cloud services using OpenStack internally. Um, there are companies who use OpenStack to build their internal clouds for their IT departments, and there are also companies who try to make a living selling OpenStack-based services. I'm going to start explaining the, the, the features, but again, keep in mind, developers have code that needs to be run somewhere. The somewhere usually is virtual machines. Either you buy a virtual machine for a provider and you pay every month a fixed amount of money for a fixed amount of resources, or you go to a cloud provider and magical stuff happens. You can change the sizes, you can shut them off and on, with API calls, same as in a development system call, and stuff will happen and you will be built accordingly. So you get economy, you get flexibility, you can add more resources and, and shrink them. We call, them, we call that thing scale out or, or scale up, and you get a lot of benefits. That's why the cloud is such a trendy word nowadays. So OpenStack is a software toolkit. It's composed by a bunch, like a lot of modules, for lack of a better term, that allows you to build clouds in your own data center. Um, you need to build a cloud that offers developers many kind of resources. You need to offer compute resources, you need to offer network resources, and storage resources. Again, a server is nothing but a computer that runs stuff. This stuff needs to be stored in a hard drive, kind of, and needs to go in and out of the VM on a network. That's the basic foundation. In OpenStack, you get those three basic servers in the compute block, in the network block, and two kind of storages, Cinder and Swift, which are block and object storage. The last meetup we talked about object storage and block and object storage and one sort of block storage. It was it's called Ceph as a backend, but it's being published via OpenStack using Cinder. I will keep talking about backends and plugins all the time. Any question, please raise your hands. It's more like a development concept. It's not really relevant. But for now on, keep in mind, this is like generic terms that reflect OpenStack pieces. In the real life, what you have is a backend who implements storage, and you only publish some features thanks to OpenStack module. Okay? So this, uh, this is an overview of what's included in the latest release. You get a database service, which is it is very useful. You add this Python module, you run it in a server, and what it does is it creates and destroys MySQL databases. And you as a customer, you don't manage any more MySQL. You just get, hey, get me a MySQL database, and you get that as an API result. For those who don't know what API is, it's an application programming interface, but I'm supposing everyone here knows what the development is. So same thing with identity. It's like, OK, I need to create a user. Give me a user. And on the back end, it's going to talk with an LDAP backend and create a user. Same thing with the groups and so on. So overall, this, are, this is the picture. Those are project names, fancy names. And this is more or less what it does translated to human words. There are two kind of projects. In OpenStack, more mature ones and newer. They call them incubated because they just appear. They, they are like around one year old, like babies. Those are just toddlers. They can still kick you in the hard, insensible parts. So there are also two kind of projects, those who actually do stuff, functionalities, and those who are more like uh, foundational stuff. For instance, QA is just a sub-project who handles all the internal uh, development and testing environments and all the methodologies that people use to work in this open source project. Okay? It's quite complex. I'm going to try to focus on the most useful ones. So you, can of, you will get the feeling of why OpenStack is getting so much traction, because it actually does a lot of stuff. 
So this release, the ISOS release, was actually released a couple of weeks ago, and not even a month ago. Um, it's, it's getting a lot of attention on the media, because uh, right now almost every single player has uh, already committed to the project. You will see Intel even, the NASA, obviously you will see a, bit, a bunch of big names putting efforts um, into this software. It has failed. <laughs> so, what's different between this release, this release and the others is the first time they kind of invited users, people who are actually paying for OpenStack. Um, we know big telco providers in south of the border, like ATT, Comcast, Time Warner, you have also Sprint Verizon, who are actively pushing OpenStack as their foundation for either cloud services or internal um, systems. Um, but the thing is, it was until now more like a developer party. You know, developers, they met every six months, they throw big parties, they talk to each other, they also met every month or so on IRC, they chat along. But users and operators, as we call them, they weren't really invited. So the first time they, they are brought there, and you will see a lot of operational announcements. So uh, the big picture here, OpenStack right now is more than production ready. It's actually been um, fine-tuned to work more smoothly than before. Uh, there are a lot of bug fixes, it's more stable than ever. Uh, it, it, integrates a lot of services right now, it's around 18. And if you ever are curious about to see who is using OpenStack, click on this uh, link, which by the way will be posted in our website, in montrealopenstack.org, and uh, you will see some uh, statistics about who is using it, how big are the clusters, you will see like 10,000 nodes in some of them. The CERN, by the way, those in, those in Geneva who run the large LHC thing, they're running OpenStack as well to crunch the results. This is one of the biggest ones. Actually, in the worldwide, it's the biggest cluster of computes altogether. Uh, what are people looking in OpenStack? Well, this is the result of the latest uh, inquiry. They like the, the, that it's uh, stable, but they want it to be even more stable. They like the amount of documentation, but they want it to be even better. They like to see migrations to have zero downtime, but again, um, this is more technical stuff, but you see more or less the features people want. They want high availability, they want security, they want uh, user interface improved, and so on. Actually, you ask the same questions to any customer of any software, more or less they will get you the same answers. Um, but the new features are the kind of my point in this presentation, and I'm gonna go over every major project. Again, this is very boring, this kind of presentations. I know, I'm sorry. You will get this presentation available to download. I'm just going to highlight the big words, and then I would like to move on to the next presentation. So Swift, as I said before, it's an object storage solution. It stores objects. Objects, who wants to know more, go to the website, and you can download the Swift presentation. You will understand it better. Um, new changes, you get uh, a new URL who will report you back what are the capabilities being installed in the cluster. Anyway, you get new system metadata. You can now store Swift with different file system implementations, which is pretty neat. Um, Real-world translation means that you can have Swift cluster on any kind of storage solution, which, le which allows companies to have a single storage solution for all their solutions, regardless if it's compute, object storage, block storage. And this is getting out of traction, because those companies that I mentioned before, they're talking about petabytes. And having one big cluster of petabytes it's hard enough. If they have to have two clusters of half a petabyte, it's more than twice as complex, and they don't like it. They'd rather have one big problem instead of two very big problems. Storage policies, another change. Uh, they now have new account uh, ACLs, like uh, access control list, and new replication schemas, and all other null features. Nova, this is uh, actually the foundation of OpenStack. When you call Nova, it's because you want a VM. Hey, Nova, give me a virtual server. I need four gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs. OK. So um, while you were asking that, and, the, operat and the, <coughs> the operator, let's say here, the iWeb team, wanted to do an upgrade, for a while you couldn't access Nova because they were up doing upgrades. The new change now is they allow uh, seamless upgrades. This is a quite a big change. So you can keep asking for VMs and keep paying the provider. Can I say that? You keep doing business? That's good for you guys? Anyways, um, you can also uh, have more performance with the new KVM enhancements. Um, very technical stuff here, but so you know, right now is one of the fastest visualization schemas, KVM, and Nova integrates with that seamlessly. 
have new scheduling, which is very important for stuff like SDN that Damien is going to talk about. Without this thing, it's pretty hard to do server-defined network and advanced networking. So um, you will see more words like scheduling in this cloud thing. And I hope in the future to talk about, to talk to you, explain you more about scheduling and how is this important for a network. Um, another small feature that I'd rather not get into it. Glance. Glance is the image system as an image, the same con concept as in Amazon. For those who haven't used Amazon, an image is like an Ubuntu 12.0 for uh, ISO, something that you call, we call that an, an image, a server image. So uh, the problem is companies tend to charge you for the amount of images you have. If you have also a snapshot of your server, it becomes an image, like a point-in-time picture of your server. And you pay for that. Um, the problem with paying about, uh, for, about paying for it is that if your server is, let's say, one terabyte big, and you do a snapshot, and the snapshot only has small megabytes of difference, until now you were paying the full terabyte. And it wasn't cool. So they changed this thing out. So you see, it's like, we got a user complaining. I don't want, I don't want to pay my full terabyte of a snapshot, because the snapshot is just a, a little chunk. So they added some code, and in less than three months, they changed altogether the system, and everybody's happy now. Um, they all actually added two new concepts about image size and virtual size, which is, again, when you have a compressed image, the, the actual Im uh, size or not. Um, what else? Improve VMware backend. That's pretty neat. Moving on, Horizon is a graphical interface. For those who haven't seen OpenStack ever, it's like, Simple website, I would say. Pretty, is, you know, white with some buttons on the left. You just click and request. Uh, well, they've improved it, as in every release. Um, nothing really incredible here. They use now it's Spanish is an option, so I'm glad for it. I don't know if any <laughs> is any Dutch here or Korean, but you'll be glad as well that there is a translation now available. Keystone. Keystone is the identity, is the, is the software that knows who's who, who's allowed to create VMs, and more importantly, who's allowed, let's say, to delete virtual machines. As in, oh, you're nobody, and you want to remove the database server, yeah, go. I, I let you, you know, I, I, I'm allowing you to remove the database server, why not? So this is the thing that forbids you doing this stuff, okay, it's pretty important. Uh, again, it, its main backend, people use LDAP, or Active Directory from Microsoft, for, for those who are more familiar with Microsoft. And so there's a new API with new features. The thing called Federated Authentication is pretty big. It will, it's kind of the thing we all, we're all here uh, used to use with Google, Google, Facebook, or LinkedIn, you know, with single sign-on and federated authentication. Or these kind of mechanisms are now being embedded there. I'm not saying you can now log in with your Google account into their OpenStack cluster and ask for a VM, though, but <laughs> technically it's almost possible now, okay? Um, some performance redesigns, now they split the databases in two. You, have, you got group-based role assignments, which it makes, it, it makes life easier for administrator, and other minor updates, okay? Um, Neutron, this is network. Uh, it relates to a main presentation that you will see later about software-defined network. This is the answer to software-defined network. It has four major features. Again, you had regular network as a service, you got firewall as a service, load, load balancer as a service, and VPN as a service. Um, so this is the core definition of Neutron. What are the new additions to it? Obviously, backends. As I said earlier, OpenStack is based on backends. You, got, you get the open source basic backend. Uh, let, let's say HA proxy as a load balancer, but companies put money and efforts to get their own backends accepted. Cinder, uh, for those who have ever used iSCSI, by the way, does it ring a bell? iSCSI as S-C-S-I. Uh, this is a, this, this software that manages it. Um, that's an oversimplification, okay? It's more complex than that. But this block storage. It's, you have a VM and you want an additional hard drive. Instead of going there and pluming a SATA cable, you just call this thing and say, hey, what, connect a SCSI target to this TCP port, and it 
pops and gets you a, a hard drive. So they have Im improved a bit the, the functionalities. You get better backups. You get uh, a new support for fiber channel zones, which I don't even know what it is. And encryption, by the way, has some big consequences on the backend, but you can get encrypted hard drives on demand. And you don't see it. It's like it gets unlocked automatically, and you know. Like, I mean, the provider promises you a, a, a encrypted hard drive. Anyways, um, pretty neat changes. Sailometer. It's like the monitoring thing. It's like this, the the metering, the, the gauge. You know, the, the gauge is thing in English. Like the thing that tells you if you are green, yellow, or red, or if it, things go fast or slow, and it gets you this data. Okay, but uh, it's it's. Getting pretty complex and big, and they have to re-architecture this stuff because you're getting such a big amount of information for uh, for big private clouds, and they're improving it all together all, all, all the time. They're changing the database uh, backends. They put in HBase. This is like big data for those who like big words. Um, they are removing examples which make the, the system more um, more thin and more agile, and major. Major changes, actually. It's been, it's been revamped, pretty much. The pipeline configuration is some, one of the most important things, because the configuration file is not compatible anymore. So anyway, um, heat is the, uh, is the orchestration mechanism. For those who have used Amazon, it's related to uh, cloud formation. Cloud formation? Yeah, cloud formation. Um, it was actually compatible with that software and now they don't like it anymore and they want you to move the, the, the configuration files from one format, it's, it was JSON, and now you're supposed to rewrite it and use YAML instead. You're, we are good to go right now, but in the months to come they, it will probably disappear. New resources, new, um, new group mechanism that allows non-admins to use it, um, more notifications, and that's all, I would say. And Trove, this is particularly my favorite project here because I had to use MySQL and manage it for a while and I, like, I don't see the value, I'm not DBA. And Trove is the piece of software that does it for me. I just ask Trove new database and it gets me a connector with a user and a password and a table space for me. And it supports a variety of backends, it supports MySQL, Percona, MongoDB, Redis, Cassandra, Couchbase. It's like, oh, I want a Couchbase database, who knows how to install Couchbase, I don't have a clue. Ready, uh, Tro Trove knows Couchbase, so I'm just asking Trove, hey, can you do it for me, please? Yeah, he's a connector. And he deals with all the sizing, auto scaling, shrinking out, scaling out servers and stuff. Um, it's pretty cool, this project. Okay, and now it's stable and mature. Um, that's all about the main projects. There are four more. They're called Incubated. Ironic. What it does is it actually installs the servers, the metal. We call that metal management. Um, do you guys ever heard about Pixie, IPMI, TFTP, or those kind of acronyms? What they do is allow you to bootstrap a server. You've never used it. You don't know what it is. You just open the box, you know, connect to the power supply, the network cable, and it learns what it's supposed to do. It installs itself thanks to Ionic. Um, it's actually one of the things missing and that everybody was doing the, the same thing and they kind of standardized. Marconi, that's uh, another, it's in my honor, by the way, I did it. No, 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 okay, sorry. You know, it wasn't me, it was uh, Rackspace who did this software. Um, this software is uh, commercially sold as Cloud Queues. It, it matches Amazon uh, simple Clue SQS, I don't know the acronym though. But uh, it's a message notification as a service. You get either pub soup, you get a producer, consumer. Uh, something that developers usually try to, to, to use. It's a good practice to use um, messaging. Uh, the third is, uh, incubated project now is Sahara. It's Hadoop as a service. By the way, who knows or have ever listened about Hadoop here? Yeah? Only? Big data. Big data? Yeah. So Hadoop is, Hadoop is the open source software that does big data. It's like 90% of people who claims to do big data uses Hadoop. The other try to do the same with either MongoDB or commercial solutions. Um, so the fact that now OpenStack can manage natively a Hadoop cluster and make it scale and grow and shrink and it's pretty neat. It's, it gives me a reason to sell OpenStack. So um, I like it. Uh, it also supports the very latest version of Hadoop, and it can even store results instead of having its own 
storage system, which in Hadoop is called HDFS. We can use now Swift, which again goes back to the reasoning of why companies need Swift and why do need services like ours or LightWeb, which is a perfect excuse to sell Hadoop. Uh, Barbican. It's uh, the latest incubator project. It's for secret management, as in NSA, in which you ask for a, for a, not a password, I would say a cryptographic key, and you get that uh, dynamically. Uh, let's say I want a 2048-bit key. You request it, and it gets you one, something like that. And you can also link to it from many different um, systems. Again, who's pushing this, this project? Pushing it by companies who sell security software, right? So um, that's all for incubated and, uh, and stable projects. There are many more coming. <laughs> Sorry about it. Um, this one I won't cover them. Those are, as I said, like more under the, of under the hood projects. And the interesting ones, those are, that are coming, this is a brief list. The ones, my choice, I will leave it for you guys to read it if you have time. DNS as a service is similar to Route 53 in Amazon. This thing is almost there. It's going to be stable very soon. Um, I would say load balancer as a service, but it's kind of abandoned. It was HP who was doing this. And Mistral. I also, probably you developers like the concept workflow as a service. It's like a, they, they call it the cron for clouds. Like, you, yeah, I don't see the point because I like Cron. But anyways, those are more projects that are coming. And Manila is getting out of traction because the commercial vendors of storage solutions are selling NFS and CFS. They call it network attached storage, and they're pushing Manila as a project. And that's all about OpenStack. If you guys have any doubt, I will do a proper question and answer after this last slide. I just want you to give a, very, a bit of a taste of other projects that are interesting, and you the guys developers would really, really want to get into any of those projects. This is very cool. Any of those projects are very cool for developers. They call them platform as a service. And again, you really want to look into that. If you ever use, let's say, Heroku, you as a developer, they say, I want my application to be passed somewhere, like you don't even know where, you do git push, and it goes somewhere, and it runs, and you get a URL, and that's all. You're, you're, you're live, you're in production, and it scales. You need a database, it works. It's this easy to, to deploy. And any of those inf software stacks will do more or less what I just explained. Some are more complicated, some are more easy. Um, in another meetup here in Montreal, in the DevOps Montreal, we've actually covered some of them. Uh, there was a Juju presentation not so long ago, and you will see a lot of Docker presentations as well in either DevOps Montreal or even Big Data Montreal. Um, there's a lot of traction, a lot of interest in the developer community for any of those. So 